My vision for the GW Cancer Institute is really to set the standard for patient-centered care through our patient support programs, our healthcare professional education, and our research. There's about 13.7 million cancer survivors in the U.S. today, and um, we're learning more and more as they survive longer and longer. So we used to really celebrate um, five-year survival, which we still do, um, but survivors are living 10 years, 20 years, decades after treatment, and as as their disease impacts their lives more longitudinally, it's really important to assess what patient preferences are, what their needs are, and make sure they're part of the decision-making process. So we're really proud of our patient-centered programs at GW. The GW Cancer Institute works in collaboration with the GW Medical Faculty Associates and the GW Hospital to make sure that we're meeting patient needs. Our patient navigation program is a leading-edge program. We have three patient navigators that work with two nurse navigators and a cancer center social worker and all of these individuals work together to try to get patients across uh, the cancer care continuum from the time of an adverse screening through post-treatment cancer survivorship. Each patient will face different barriers as they go through treatment and there's different barriers that I would say are more common in different areas of diagnosis and treatment. So whether that's something emotional, financial, whether that has to do with work or school or home life, we really exist as a resource to kind of help them troubleshoot really anything that comes up during the course of their treatment at GW. The cancer navigators each have our own special skill and so we are able to address all of those different barriers. So as a result of patient navigation at GW, we've identified several things that we can do to kind of stop those barriers before they even become a problem. Um, one of those is in relation just to an insurance and um, referral process from um, patient's primary care doctor. So we noticed that there were um, several different clinics in the area who needed a little bit of education about how to make that go smoother. So we actually created a presentation to educate them about breast imaging and then how that referral process leads to um, uh, diagnosis and treatment. We also just recently uh, rolled out a distress screening process. Uh, first we started in hematology, oncology, and then we rolled out our distress screening in our breast care center. To do distress screening, what we do is um, at every first chemotherapy visit for our patient, we give them a distress thermometer, which was developed by um, the NCCN. And then they'll either meet with myself, um, one of the patient navigators, or someone to kind of go over it with them and make sure we meet their needs. And the purpose of the distress screening policy is really to just find, uh, find out what those patient needs are sooner and address them sooner to improve the quality of life of patients who are going through cancer treatment here. One situation that distress screening has been really successful is that we had a patient come in and um, mark that they were really worried and anxious and troubled. And when I met with them, what they were really worried about was being able to afford their oral chemotherapy. Um, by knowing that ahead of time, I was able to apply them for a patient assistance program um, which paid for their treatment, which meant that they had their treatment on time um, and were able to complete it successfully. We also have two survivorship clinics. So we have one clinic focused on adult survivors of pediatric cancer and another clinic focused on adult onset cancer survivors. And any patient who accesses the clinic gets a multidisciplinary team consultation and leaves with a survivorship care plan. Patients have responded very positively to the clinic. They are happy for a variety of reasons. Some people are extremely happy to have a physical written document with their care plan on it that has the follow-up recommendations for them and their cancer. Um, you can just see the anxiety go away when they have that. This is my plan. This is how I'm going to follow up. At GW, survivorship and navigation really go hand in hand and both really focus on quality of life for the patient. The navigators here help the patient overcome barriers to make it through treatment into the post-treatment survivorship phase. And as the survivorship patient navigator, the navigators will refer patients to me as they complete treatment, and I help connect them to our survivorship programs, such as the Next Steps to Wellness Cancer Survivorship Education class and the Thriving After Cancer Adult Survivorship Clinic. I would say I'm most proud of our successes in patient-centered care um, where we've translated those findings to help other institutions. So we actually help coordinate the citywide patient navigation network, which is comprised of about 20 patient navigators across the city. We work with primary care clinics, other cancer centers, and community-based organizations to remove access barriers for patients all across the city. 
Um, in the last three years, we've served over 6,000 patients and removed nearly 25,000 barriers to healthcare in our city. We've also taken some of our survivorship knowledge and helped other institutions set up survivorship programs. Um, in 2009, we launched our Center for the Advancement of Cancer Survivorship Navigation and Policy. We've trained over 200 healthcare professionals to develop patient-centered programs across the country and even interna internationally. It's really made a difference. They, they, each patient has said everyone should have this visit, everyone should have these services. We feel the same way.